Dr. Bog, please introduce yourself and share with us key aspects of accreditation and the KCREP regulations and future. Well, I'm happy to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Carol Bobby. Uh, I am the president and CEO of the Council for Accreditation of Counseling and Related Educational Programs, known by most people as KCREP. Um, it's a position that I've held for a long time, um, certainly much longer than I ever thought that I uh, would be in that position when I assumed it in 1987. I think that means about 24, no, 27 years, if my addition is correct, that I've been at the helm of KCREP, and it's been an exciting 27 years. Um, I've uh, had a unique position in the counseling profession. A lot of people don't know that as the administrator of KCREP that I am a licensed professional counselor. Um, my license is in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, I am a graduate of the University of Florida's master's program in counseling and community and other agency settings, which was a predecessor of the clinical mental health counseling program. And also I got my doctorate in counselor education in 1987, which was, well, 1986. It was uh, a few months before I assumed the role at, at KCREP. Um, this morning I had the pleasure of uh, being one of the keynote speakers at the FOMCA conference uh, held here in Orlando, Florida. And um, it, was a, it was an exciting opportunity for me because the theme of this conference is all about accreditation and certification. Um, and of course, um, a lot of people refer to me as the queen of accreditation, I think because I've been doing it for so long. But it is a passion for me and I really do believe in quality assurance in educational preparation and especially in the way it, it uh, affects the future professionals within our profession of counseling. Um, I think it's a public protection issue that we train counselors to be competent, highly skilled, and highly professional and ethical in their conduct with all people that come to their doors hurting or in need of, of some work. And so counselor preparation is an important element of becoming a profession. Um, I think in order to understand KCREP and the effect that it's had on the counseling profession, uh, you need to really sort of take a look at the history of the profession. And you need to put KCREP within the context of where the profession has been and where it's going. And it's interesting because having been a member of the profession now for 30 years, I, I entered my master's degree in the early 80s when there was a lot of wonderful stuff happening in the profession. Um, I was in my master's degree program uh, when KCREP was started in 1981. And so I was able to hear all the hubbub about uh, what was happening in the profession, how we now had a national standard that all counselors needed to have preparation in certain areas. What I didn't realize as a student at the time was how important that was. I thought, oh, there's a lot of excitement about this. I want to be a counselor. Um, that's good, right? That's good. So a lot of things have happened in the 30 years and putting KCREP in the context of the profession, I can say, honestly say that it's taken 60 years for the counseling profession to truly get to be where it is a bona fide profession. And in taking a look at that context, I think you have to understand uh, a little bit about the benchmarks of what it means to be a profession. Professions um, aren't just professions because they say so. Professions are, by their very nature, exclusionary. Only certain people can become members of the profession. Um, and they're exclusionary because they say what the training must be in order to practice within your profession. Uh, they say, uh, how do you get there? In, in the counseling profession, we say it's a minimum of a master's degree. And we're moving very quickly towards saying it's a minimum of a master's degree that is 60 semester hours. And then of course you have to have a way to determine that the person has that knowledge and skills and that has to do with our credentialing processes and those are certification and licensure in the counseling profession. We have examinations out there to measure that, the National Counselor Exam and the National Clinical Mental Health Counselor Exam. Um, those are the two that are most often used for licensing boards. And then again, you have to have code of ethics. But when does a profession really become a profession? And what I would like to 
impart to you today is that it's not just saying you're prof a profession and having all those things, it's also about having external recognition of what you do. And that's where the counseling profession is quickly coming into its own. We uh, began to have that kind of external recognition when we gained licensure, but it took 30 years to get licensure in all 50 states and the territories. In fact, California was the last state to get licensure, and that really was not until 1996. No, no, excuse me, I have to correct that, 2006. Yes. 2006, that's just a few short years ago. Um, so we have licensure. We have been uh, written up in Ann Landers. I, I mentioned that happened in the early 90s. That was a big deal because before you only ever heard social workers and psychologists and psychiatrists mentioned as people to go to as a helping professional. But professional counselors, licensed mental health counselors are really coming into their own. But I think what's happened most recently uh, has to do with the angst that is going on among a lot of licensed professionals, licensed counselors today, whether it's mental health counseling, licensed professional counselor, and that has to do with the fact that the federal government has begun to recognize the counseling profession, but when they did so, uh, they did so without a lot of input from the counseling profession, although in the long run, I think it's going to push us to be a stronger, more recognized profession. Um, but they commissioned a study by the Institute of Medicine, um, which took place just a couple of years ago. It started in 2009, and the Institute of Medicine released a report in 2010. And in that report, basically what they said, and they were looking specifically at TRICARE, which is um, in, in the military, TRICARE is the system that is allowed to work with military individuals and their families. And they said that if you want to be an independent practitioner of mental health services within TRICARE, you must graduate from a KCREP accredited program in clinical mental health counseling. Now, a lot of people think that KCREP went and lobbied heavily for that. Um, I can guarantee you, as the president and CEO of KCREP, that KCREP was as surprised as anyone else in the profession that that was the um, ruling that they came down with their report. And again, that report is what then drove Congress to recognize graduates of KCREP accredited clinical mental health counseling programs as those individuals who were also licensed and passed examinations to be eligible for independent practice within that system. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there about that. The grandparenting period was rather short, but there was a grandparenting period. Um, and you could get the CCMHC uh, credential as part of it. You had to be licensed. But one of the things that people don't understand is why KCREP was actually chosen. Why was KCREP brought into this picture? Why has KCREP been written into the educational requirements? Well, the federal government, when they look at a profession, they say, what is the national standard? How can we ensure that people that are going to practice that we're going to recognize are consistently trained and all meet the same educational entry requirements into the profession? And when they looked around, they said that it was the KCREP requirement that they needed to rely on. This is no different than the way they have treated other professions. They've treated the profession of social work that way. They look at CSWE. They've treated the profession of medicine that way. They look at AMA. They've treated all the professions that they recognize for the public health, safety, and welfare factors, which is where federal dollars go and they are bound by that. They look at it for a national standard and they said KCREP is that national standard. A lot of people say, well, why didn't you rely on licensure? I mean, if I'm licensed as a, as a professional counselor or a licensed mental health counselor, my license should be good enough. And, you know, in all honesty, there's a lot of wonderful practitioners out there that may not have graduated from a KCREP accredited program that have held a license in good standing. But the IOM, when they looked at it, they looked at the licensing requirements of all 50 states and they said, well, gosh, this state requires 40 hours. This state requires 48 hours. This state accredits, uh, looks at accredited programs that don't have clinical training in them at all, that don't teach the DSM, that don't teach anything about the ICD. 
this state requires 60 hours. And they said, the standards are all over the map and we have to find one standard. And they only chose one K accredited program area and that was clinical mental health counseling. So we have other clinical practice areas that aren't even recognized. I think that I, I, I say this information over and over again to the public because I want the public to understand that this is moving the profession forward. Um, we hear a lot of um, myths about KCREP, that KCREP is trying to harm the profession, um, that KCREP is somehow trying to um, in some way harm other professions who may train counselors that can get licensed. The Masters in Counseling Psychology program is an example of that. We have seminaries that are training counselors and they get master's degrees in religious education studies. Um, KCREP is not purposely trying to disenfranchise any of those programs, but what we are trying to say that as part of being a profession, that there needs to be a clear professional identity, there needs to be a clear pathway and a national standard that people can rely on so that they understand that if they've graduated from a counseling program, that this, this is the preparation they've had and this is the identity that they will hold. Uh, we've run into a lot of people that there's mass confusion. They graduated from a psychology program, but their license is mental health counseling, and they don't know how to present themselves to the public. But most of all, as a profession, we haven't done a very good job of presenting ourselves to outsiders. And the one way to do that has to be through unification of all the elements of a profession. It's a unified identity. It's unified professional um, educational preparation standards. It's, it's unified scopes of practice. Uh, it's a unified title for what the license is. And so we begin to look at how these efforts play out, and there have been a lot of efforts over the years for the profession to actually take hold, stop the infighting, or in a session that I was just at, um, stop eating our own young and try to move forward within uh, where we want to be in 2020. And that's what the uh, American Association of State Counseling Boards and the American Counseling Association did when they began the 2020 directive, uh, a vision for the future of counseling. I contend that the profession of counseling is ready for 2020. We are ready to bite the bullet and have one professional entry requirement into the profession. Um, I think it's time to do it. It's come from external now uh, with the federal government coming in and saying these are the standards we'll accept, but now it's time for us to own who we are. So I hope that everybody that's listening to this will understand that KCREP is trying to strengthen the profession. We are part of the profession. We believe that, that you are us and we are you, um, and that we all need to work together to move this. I want to bust one myth that I hear constantly about KCREP before I end this though. And, and that myth has to do with, well, but I graduated from a program um, back in the 70s and KCREP didn't even exist then. Or, well, I graduated a couple years ago, but I didn't know about KCREP and now I can't go back and redo this. And um, I hear KCREP is against grandparenting and I'm never gonna be able to be grandparented in for licensure purposes, for work within TRICARE or the VA because KCREP is against it. I, I need to straighten this out because it gets said so often, KCREP is 100% behind grandparenting. And we have a position statement on that that can be found at the KCREP website. Easy to find us, www.kcrep.org. But that statement, it focuses on licensure, but it permeates the message that we want everybody to hear about whatever the requirement is you're trying to meet. We're looking at a generous grandparenting period. We would like grandparenting to look at especially licensure requirements, at least seven years out so that people that are currently in programs that may not have the benefit know what they may need to do and accomplish and they have choices, okay? They can still get licensed. But we also say within that grandparenting period that anyone that's currently licensed and was licensed under a statute that had certain requirements, as long as they practice and keep their license in good standing, they should be able to renew it there should be grandparenting provisions for them when they cross borders. So it's not about disenfranchising any single group of individuals. It's really about moving the profession forward. And we're almost there, folks. And I've really been 
I've been delighted to be a part of it. Um, and I'm always happy to try to spread the message about how we can work together within the profession. Dr. Bobby, thank you for sharing this information with us. Uh, as a matter of fact, you clear up some of my own misunderstandings. Uh, for example, some of my colleagues will say that KCAP is not respectful or inclusive of multicultural and social justice perspectives in mental health counseling. What would you say to that? Well, um, I think that anyone that would take a look and read our standards would know that, quite honestly, that's just not a true statement. That would be another, what I would call, another myth about KCREP. Um, I did a, a, a research study, this was several years ago, um, I've been told many, many times I need to publish it, and if I had more time in at the office, I would probably try to do it. But I actually took a look at the KCREP standards from the very beginning to where they are now. And I began to trace um, the effects of when, um, well, I think the, the division used to be called the Association of Non-White Concerns. And, of course, uh, you may know that it, it morphed into the American um, the Multicultural Association, AMCD, of, of Counseling and Development. I'm not getting that acronym right at all right now, but that's okay. Um, and then, of course, now we have the CSJ, which is the Counselors for Social Justice. And with the creation of those specialty divisions of the American Counseling Association, each one of them has had an impact on our standards revision processes. What I recall from looking at standards revision across the time, and the first KCREP standards were 1981, um, and we revise our standards every year, was that it was in 1994 that there was a huge push to make sure that the standards really reflected uh, the knowledge that was necessary and the skills that were necessary to work in a multicultural and pluralistic society. And so you saw that language everywhere, and in fact there were laundry lists of, of, of groups that you needed to be aware of and that, that you needed to know um, how to work with the diverse groups of individuals and to be open to the fact that you may have personal biases. And so that was all built into the KCREP standards. Um, after CSJ was created, then you began to hear a lot more about the social justice language and that began to be infused into the KCREP standards also. So every program that KCREP accredits has to address these standards and every program that KCREP accredits is going to uh, have to work with students on these issues so that counselors are open and counselors do understand what working in a multicultural and pluralistic society with diverse groups of individuals and working from an advocacy point of view entails for them. And it's, it's not just about advocacy for the profession, which you've heard a lot from me today, but it is about advocacy on behalf of your clients and understanding when social justice occurs and when it needs to be addressed in order to move that client forward in a positive direction. Thank you. What about the relationship with core standards? Um, that has been a, a, a wonderful um, myth to bust. Um, one of the myths that I put up in my presentation today was that KCREP and CORE are at war. And I actually heard uh, that statement um, announced at a, an ACES luncheon um, last year. And it was also touted as the reason why 2020 was not able to move forward with um, educational requirements in terms of uh, a vision for the future, one set. Um, KCREP and CORE have both existed side by side for a number of years. Um, we've always been very respectful of one another. Uh, back in the mid-2000s, we even attempted a, a merger agreement, and we worked very hard on that merger agreement. We spent three years in merger discussions. We had a, a new organizational name, a new set of bylaws, um, the merger was at the 11th hour when the vote came down that KCREP uh, supported the merger and all the merger documents, 100% uh, the board was behind it. CORE did not actually vote on the merger, so the merger failed. And the reason CORE didn't vote on the merger had to do with professional identity requirements. They were very, very concerned at the time that, um, that the merger agreements, th there was a 10-year grandparenting period that CORE could consider for their program faculty to move from two to three, 
and they would have to also meet KCREP's new uh, core faculty requirements, but not by 2013, but by 2019. That was what the grandparenting period was. But there were a lot of people in the core um, arena that were very concerned about that, and, and I understand that. Um, you know, when you're passionate about something, uh, when your identity has been driven in a certain direction, it's very difficult to step back and say that even in 10 years from now, if we move in this direction, well, what does that mean to me personally? And so people have a hard time getting out of their skin. So the merger didn't happen. And we continued though, however, to work side by side. A lot of people, if you don't know, CORE accredits rehabilitation counseling programs and KCREP accredits the other specialties. So there was also that element that I think that people were concerned somehow that there was a big fish coming along to eat a little fish, which was never the intention of any of our, of our discussions. But through the 2020 discussions, one of the motions that was passed during 2020 was that all of the delegates, 30 different organizations participating, said that they believed that having a single accrediting unit would be of benefit to the profession. And I give KCREP and CORE a lot of credit because both of the organizations heard that. We were not at war with one another, but we knew we had to find a solution to move the profession forward. We believe we have found a way to help move both CORE and KCREP forward at the same time that we move the profession forward. And that is that um, KCREP now has a corporate affiliate and that corporate affiliate is CORE. So the, the wording you're gonna hear is KCREP and its corporate affiliate CORE where we are focusing our efforts are uh, in the implementation of the uh, clinical rehabilitation counseling standards that KCREP adopted last July. And um, we've had press releases on this. We are working very hard to have a unified front for the profession. Uh, and we also wanna help the students. And I think students get lost in this discussion because what was happening here was CORE made it very public that, they, that their standards did not address clinical preparation. They were not preparing uh, graduates through their standards for mental health counseling. Um, it's not that some of their programs weren't doing it, it's that core standards didn't require it. So I need to make that differentiation. So the new clinical rehabilitation counseling standards take care of that because those rehab programs that want to train people to become licensed and practice clinically in mental health counseling can now do that and they can retain their rehabilitation identity um, because those programs are going to get duly accredited. CORE is going to implement KCREP's clinical rehabilitation counseling standards and they will become CORE accredited using those standards. KCREP is going to put that same program through a review against KCREP's clinical mental health counseling standards. The program has the dual identity, the dual accreditation, and the students can call themselves graduate of a KCREP clinical mental health counseling program for the benefit of TRICARE and the Veterans Administration and any licensure requirements that may move that way. So this is a, tr a move that was truly about the students. And again, I commend the two organizations and their leadership for taking that stand. Thank you so much. One, one last question. Uh, I, I heard you saying this twice, and I still have to share with you the concerns I get from some of our members. This belief that KCREP lobbied heavily to be recognized by the IOM, by the uh, TRICARE, uh, and, and if I remember your exact words, and I teach about intentional, in, intentional listening, you said, by the way, we learn about that at the same time you did. Help me understand that and help me clarify that which seemed to be another myth. That is, that is a big myth. And, and those words were exactly the words that came out of my mouth. And they were specifically in reference to the decision that was made by the Veterans Administration back in 2010. Um, when the Veterans Administration came out, uh, they created a, um, a, a new classification for hiring, and it was called mental health specialist. Um, and they created this classification because, as you know, um, they're swamped right now, and they felt that uh, we need more mental health services. They were getting a lot of pressure 
from families um, and from the federal government. So they created this so that they could hire mental health specialists. And what they did in creating this classification was they had to set up hiring regulations. And so what they said was anyone who graduated from a KCREP accredited program could qualify for the hiring as one of the eligibility requirements for being hired as a mental health specialist. Um, as I said, I learned about that when the rest of the world learned about that. I had never been contacted by the Veterans Administration. KCREP did not do any lobbying with them whatsoever. Um, the other myth that, that is out there is that KCREP lobbied heavily with the Institute of Medicine, which released the report that the TRICARE requirements were, were based on. Um, KCREP is not a lobbying organization, but we do provide information. When the Institute of Medicine, uh, uh, when they were commissioned by Congress to do a report on the counseling profession, one of the things that the IOM did, and they, they had a committee of about, I think there were, I don't know, anywhere from 15 to 20 people on their committee, but they brought people in that they wanted to talk to about the profession. So the American Counseling Association was brought in to do a presentation. Actually, we were all there the same day. Uh, NBCC was there, a representative from the American Mental Health Counselors Association was there, uh, KCREP was invited, and that's all I remember right now. There may have been uh, some other organizations from counseling that were brought in. We were all simply asked to do an informational presentation on who we were and what we did, and to leave them with any information. And that's what KCREP did. I was the, the person that did the speaking on behalf of KCREP. We answered questions. Uh, a little bit about the IOM committee. It's mostly physicians around, uh, a lot of psychiatrists. Uh, there was a social worker on the committee. Um, there was uh, a representative from um, the occupational therapy group who also works with ANSI, which is the American National Standards Institute. Uh, and there were two counselors on there. Um, uh, one was Dr. Ted Rumley, and the other was Dr. Velia Tarvitas, who, of course, if you know Velia at all, Velia would represent the rehabilitation counselor perspective. And they met for, I think it was about a year and a half. They studied the counseling profession. They studied all of our documents. They studied all of the licensure laws. Um, KCREP simply provided them with information uh, which really consisted of if they had a question about our standards, we gave them our standards. Sometimes I got a couple of calls from them, but we did not do any heavy lobbying. That was an independent decision made by a group of experts within the IOM system. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that I should have asked you and I didn't? Well, um, what should you have asked me that you didn't ask me? Or anything else that you would like I to I guess ask? you could have asked me, you know, so how do you really feel about the counseling profession, Carol? <laughs> that would be the question I would ask me. And I would tell you that I am a true blue believer in what the counseling profession can accomplish. I think that there are, are people that can benefit from counseling. Um, what I want to make sure of is that counselors are well prepared, that they are ethical, that they are competent, um, and that they are out there knowing what they're doing and proud of who they are. And to be proud of who you are, you have to understand who you are. And you need to know the history of your profession, you need to know where your profession is going, and you need to be able to tell somebody that you're a counselor, that you're not a member of another profession. So I think I'll end it there. Thank you. Thank you very much.